What's up guys? Hey, this is Christian Brindle with Six Figure Medicare Agent. Hope this video finds you doing well. And we're back with another video. Today, guys, we're gonna talk about overcoming objections when you are making sales out in the field or over the phone. Now, this is the thing with overcoming objections. Um, I'm in the business of turning a maybe into a yes, not a no into a yes. Think about what I just said there. If you're in the business of trying to turn no's into yeses, even if you do capitalize on achieving that, a lot of the people that you sell will not stay on your books because they originally didn't want to do it and they will feel pushed into something and they'll have a negative connotation. What you want to be doing is you want to take people that are on the fence that are thinking about it that said maybe or they're skeptical but they didn't just come right out and say no and transitioning those people into yeses. This is key. This is a vital thing that I see salespeople make mistakes on. There's all these people out there that want to be closers and close people down. Guys, why don't we ever talk about efficiency? Why don't we ever discuss efficiency? I don't understand it. In my opinion, if you are out there just trying to push and push and push and push and push people that just aren't interested, aren't qualified, just flat out have their shields up and they're just going to say, no, hard no. Your time is better spent talking to another person. I want to talk to interested people. I want to talk to people that want to talk to me. I don't want to waste my time talking to a million people that don't want to talk to me. So we need to shift your gears around a little bit, guys. This isn't the 1980s where all these used car salesman tactics where you're like, you're trying to play mind games. You're trying to manipulate the situation. No. So let's start off by getting that out of the way. I'm going to give you guys some, 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 some quick tips in this video about, in my opinion, how you can kind of come, overcome some of those objections when someone's a maybe. But in my opinion, if they're just a flat out no and you're getting that vibe, move on. Your time is better spent talking to somebody else, right? You can waste a bunch of time on somebody that's not interested and still end up empty handed. So efficiency matters. You only have 24 hours in a day. Before we get into this too deep though, guys, we got talked about my favorite telemarketing lead company and that is Lead Heroes. Guys, Lead Heroes has got you covered when it comes to telemarketing leads, whether it be final expense leads, turning 65 leads, Medicare supplement leads. They just got something for everybody. Just because you watch this video, guys, they're gonna give you 10% off any order you make on their website. The link to their site can be found down in the description of this video, along with a coupon code, so go ahead and check them out. Okay, guys, let's talk about overcoming an objection, right? So most common objection that we typically get is, and it just, you're gonna get different objections kind of depending on the, the, the type of person you're going after, right? You're probably going to hear a different objection from someone that's turning 65 than someone that's already on Medicare and on a Medicare supplement. You're probably going to get a different objection from somebody who is on a DSNP than, or, or qualifies for a DSNP than a person that's in a different situation. So objections are going to vary sometimes between person to person and situation to situation, but there are some things that you're going to hear over and over and over again. Um, some of those things might be, I need to think about it, right? How many times have we heard, I need to think about it? How many times have we heard, I need to talk to my husband or my wife? I need to talk to my spouse. I need to talk to my children. I need to talk to this person, that person, whoever it might be, my caretaker. I need to talk to somebody, right? Um, how often do we hear, like if, let's say we're dealing with someone that's turning 65, we're concerned 65, but it's, well, I've already picked, I've already made, I've already picked a plan or I've already made my decision. Um, there's a very fine line, like I was just saying a second ago, between a flat out no and just an objection. I want to try to tackle the, the, the maybe objections opposed to just the no's, right? Like I don't want to really waste too much time on the no's. And that's just me, guys. I would rather... Um, I would rather give up too soon on somebody that I have virtually no chance with than 
try push too hard and just waste a bunch of my time and their time. And a lot of people don't agree with me on this, but that's okay. You don't have to. I am an efficiency guy. I'm a volume guy. I'm a bulk um, of, of conversations guy. And I feel like efficiency is such a key thing. I feel like not all activity is created equal. And you can waste your time a lot by not putting your focus and your, and your attention towards the right things. So an objection that I would give, let's say I'm talking to somebody that they are you know, on a Medicare supplement, let's say, and we're trying to change them to another Medicare supplement, we can save them, let's say, 30 bucks a month on the same plan. They say, well, I have to think about it, okay? I have to, or I have to, let's not even use I have to think about it. We'll say, I have to talk to my spouse. Let's say I'm talking to, to Charlie, and Charlie needs to talk to his spouse, Jane. Here's an example of a, a rebuttal that I would throw at this person. I would say, Charlie, I completely understand that. I completely understand where you're coming from. I'm remaining in agreement. See what I'm doing there? I never want to exit agreement with that person. I don't want to just come out and just disagree with that person because then that breeds, first of all, unfamiliarity. It's going to put him in the defensive mode. It's going to essentially make me a non-friendly um, energy for him. So I want to remain in agreement first and foremost. Charlie, I completely understand where you're coming from. And I think that it's a responsible reaction for you to be able to, to want to speak to Jane first and foremost before you make any kind of decision like this. But before you do that, let me just ask you this, this follow-up question. If you could get the same policy, right, which we've established that the two policies we're talking about are exactly the same, what you have currently and what I'm proposing, both of them are with top-notch quality insurance companies because we don't recommend any insurance companies that we don't feel like are top quality. Um, same exact coverage, same quality of insurance company, long-term rate sustainability, long-term positive, um, healthy rate increases for you going forward. But we're going to be able to cut off $360 a year on what you're paying, right? We're going to save you $360 a year. Do you think there's any shred of a chance that Jane would have a problem with that, with you saving $360 a year and literally losing nothing? Pause. That's a rebuttal that's made me a lot of money over the years, right? Um, and I'm putting the I'm putting the conversation back on him. I'm saying, listen, Charlie, if everything I was telling you was true, if if you believed everything I was telling you, if everything I was telling you was true, let's just hypothetically say that it was, and you're getting the exact same thing, carbon copy, which we all know Medicare supplement is, right? They're standardized by the federal government. Um, but it was putting $360 a year back in your pocket and you're losing absolutely nothing. Don't you think Jane would be on board with that? Don't you think she'd be a little disappointed in you for not doing that? For not protecting your guys' finances? Like those are the conversations that you guys have to have. Um, and it's not going to work every single time, but it's something that, you know, if half the people that give you that objection and you throw that objection back at them, that, that rebuttal back at them, um, if half of them be like, you know what? And then and then here's what's going to happen. They're probably not going to come right out and just say, you know what? That makes sense. Okay. What you're going to get out of them is the true reason why they are hesitant. Because usually the reason that they give you is a lie. People lie to you when, you're tr when, when they're giving you a rebuttal. They just come up with an excuse because the real reason they feel like is going to be offensive and they don't want confrontation. They don't want to hurt your feelings. People are nice. People don't want to be d douchebags most of the time, right? So if you if you throw that that rebuttal back at them very politely, very nicely, you're gonna get eventually the true rebuttal, right? And they'll be like, "Well, I've been with X insurance company so long, and how do I know this new insurance company is gonna be just as good?" Boom! I now know exactly what his his um, reservation is. He's afraid that the new insurance company won't treat him as well, right? So now I know the correct thing that I need to tackle, the correct thing I need to overcome in order to get him to make a decision. So I could say something like this. I completely understand what you mean by that. Your current insurance company, just so you know, um, I would say that they're a very good insurance company on, on, the, on the financial stability. They're rated as an A, 
by AM Best, which AM Best kind of rates the financial stability of insurance companies. This is important for you because how financially stable a company is has one small factor in terms of how much they're going to protect your rates. This other company I'm recommending is an A as well. So they're, they're equal playing fields on that ground. And I can tell you as a broker, as someone that works with all of these companies, I would put this insurance company in the exact same category in terms of friendliness and customer satisfaction and accommodation as your current plan. You got to use your tones with these guys. You, you, you got to use your tones correctly. Got to use your voice. Got to make sure that it fluctuates up, fluctuates down appropriately. So see what I did there. Be like, as somebody that works with all of these insurance companies, I can assure you that this new company that I'm recommending is in the same exact category as the one that you have now in terms of their accommodation, their customer service, and just how friendly they are to deal with. However, worst case scenario, you can always call me and I can help you out with it too. That's a benefit that is sorely missing for so many people. I can always let you know when things change. I can let you know if there's a better offer that comes available. And even if you have a question or a concern, you can always call me and get my top-notch customer service. So you're not just getting a new product, Charlie. You're not just getting a new insurance company. You're also getting me. I'm, I'm, I come with this deal. You know, so, so think, think through these things, guys. You have to be able to very calmly, without insulting anybody, without being too aggressive, you have to be calm. You have to be, very, you have to be a shrewd operator um, to kind of tear down some of these first layer objections to get to the real objection. Then you can kind of pick apart a, a little bit, right? We're trying to turn maybes into yeses, not noes into yeses. So just keep that in mind. Don't waste your time if someone's too reluctant, in my opinion. I think at some point it's not a, a, an unwise decision to cut your losses and just get off the phone and go talk to someone else because the next person might be more open. Um, but that there's an example right there how I would overcome an objection, you guys. Um, and this is what you need to understand. And the longer that you do this, the easier it's going to be for you. Um, if you guys are interested in more overcoming objections, all of it's available in Six Figure Medicare University. I go through tons of scripts, tons of sales training, just like this. This is just a little sneak peek of kind of what you get from in there. Um, if you enjoy these videos, if you enjoy these overcoming the objection videos, please let me know. Um, we'll do more of them for free on this channel, but I have to see that you guys like them first. If you guys don't like them, if this video doesn't perform well, I'm not gonna keep making the content. So it's up to you guys. You guys drive the bus. Whatever type of content you seem to like the most is what we will continue to put out. So the way you can let me know if you like this is by letting me know in the comments, smashing the like button, hitting the like button until it, it, it can't be hit anymore, um, and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when you upload. I hope this video helped you a little bit, just a little short little sales training video. Um, and if you liked it, again, let me know. We'll do more of it for you. Here's to your success and your abundance, guys. Thanks for watching.